You know, guys, I, I'm going to try to be brave today <clears throat> and play through a torn medial retinaculum allowing dislocation of my posterior tibialis tendon. So, so we're talking to Chris you, Papps Porzingis. You guys have the same thing. Have you ever, guys, have you ever heard of an injury before that took a paragraph to no. describe? Well, and, and, but, and not be followed by, oh, by the way, he's day to day. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, every time I hear day to day, I think of my great friend Charlie Steiner one night a million years ago on ESPN describing an athlete as day to day and looking seriously into the camera and saying, "But aren't we all?" Yeah, so true. Did you? Um... This is a big thing. This is a big thing for the Celtics. I, we'll, we'll get to whatever you guys. This. No, no. Let's start it, here. It, it, I want to hear what uh, you think about it. I, I think we haven't done a lot on it yet today, and I, I really have thought, Mike, that the availability or lack thereof of Kristaps Porzingis could be the story of this series. So, give us your thoughts on tonight. He looks so good. He's off for thirty-eight days. And he looked so damn good when he came back. And he played okay in game two. And now this thing happens, and it's not related to the other injury. This is troublesome. Now, to me, this makes it incumbent upon Jason Tatum to be great. Jason Tatum has to be great. He, you know he hasn't been great when they're talking about how well he's rebounding. You know, guys, I mean, come on. That's, that's, that's not his job description. And he is going to have to step it up tonight because they can put him away even without Porzingis. But if it gets to be two to one and, and Kyrie rejoins the series tonight, then if you're a Celtics plan, you have to take a, a, a deep breath and say, okay, where are we going the rest of the way? Yeah, my, my concern uh, coming out of Boston, Mike, and I am a Celtics fan, was number one, I don't imagine Drew Holiday is going to shoot. He's great. He's not going to shoot 85% every night. Uh, <laughs> right, right. You're just not going to get that. And Chris Stapp's you know, obviously, he was playing at such an incredible level. I mean, not only did he was he great offensively, but but the rim protection and how aggressive he was defensively really, really sort of made up for a lot of the shortcomings, like you just pointed out. And I do think Tatum has been clearly a contributor. But yeah, as much as you love 18, 11, and nine and these sort of you know triple double stats, you're waiting for that 35 point game from Jason Tatum when the threes go down. Something has to give tonight, either Porzingis has to be okay, or Jason Tatum has to be Jason Tatum. I, I think if neither of those happen, then it's a 2-1 series. Um, and obviously, once it gets to 3-0, I think it's this, this thing is a wrap. If you, were to, if you were to pick it right now, do you think this thing goes deep, or do you think the Celtics get the win tonight? We're talking about it being a sweeper, gentleman sweep. I still think the Celtics are the better, deeper team. They, they are incredibly talented. They are incredibly deep. They have looked incredibly poised. You know what, Peter? Here, here's my thing. If you can tell me which one of these two guys is going to be great tonight, Kyrie or Jason, maybe I can tell you who's going to win the game. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Any, um, uh, any thoughts or memories of Jerry West, Mike? Oh, yeah, a lot, a lot. I, 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 I don't want to say that I knew him well, but I knew him. And uh, one of the, when I was still doing a podcast, one of the great experiences I ever had is I did an hour with him. And, wow. You know, and and, and it, he was so gracious and so smart. And, and you look at the sweep of his career from the time he was Zeke from Cabin Creek, okay, in West Virginia. What he did with the Lakers, all the appearances just being slightly on the wrong team most of the time in the finals. And then he reinvents himself as one of the great front office guys in the history of the sport. I mean, to me, there's Red and there's him and then there's everybody else. And, and guys, even when he took over the Grizzlies and he hired Hubie Brown, remember? that They got good almost immediately. It always made me think of that great line that, that Bill Russell once said about his, his great friend, uh, childhood friend, Joe Morgan, the baseball player. Isn't it funny how good teams seem to follow Joe Morgan around? Well, that was the way it was with Jerry West, except great teams followed him around. 
I mean, he, you know, you go back and look, and, you know, all the logo stuff is great, but those were memorable series that he played when he was with the Lakers. And, and I, I, he, 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 but a figure of class and grace and elegance. And, and so we're talking about a career dating back to West Virginia that's, that's what, 65 years? 65 years he was a star in this sport. He was a star then, and he was a star the, the, the day he died. And he got Shaq, and he, he did all that. And, and you know, I, it's one of those things. I know he was 86. It was shocking today to find out that he passed because I, I, I didn't know what his physical circumstances were. No, no, I, I, all I will tell you this. There are a handful of people in my career where, where sometimes I would, I would come downstairs from my office and, and I would say to Taylor, my wife, I, I, I've got a great job. And, and she said, well, why today? And I said, because I just spent an hour on the phone with Jerry West. And, and I, it was just, it was an honor to even have been in his orbit in, in, in as small a way as I was. I'm, tr- I'm trying to think, <clears throat> Mike. He, he averaged 27 points over a, a, a 14-year career. He's the logo, literally. Yep. He, he creates Showtime. He goes and gets Kobe Bryant. He signs Shaquille <laughs> yeah. O'Neal. He gets yeah. executive yeah. of the year with the Grizzlies. Yep. He 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 helps build the Warriors, okay? What do you what is the crowning achievement for this man's career? I still think it was Jerry West basketball player. I do. Wow. I, I, I mean, I, can you imagine if, he, if they'd had the three-point line when he played, how many more points he would have scored? Okay, and, and here's, here's uh, a, 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 a great compliment uh, in an offhand way, but it was always meaningful to me. Uh, my best friend was Paul Westfall, and, and Paul Westfall – grew up idolizing Jerry West. Paul West World War 44 because of Jerry West. Mm. And and it was so meaningful to him that they became friends later uh, in, in, in Paul's life. And, and and so, yeah, West Fall War 44 for that reason and that reason was. All right, shifting to baseball, Yankees off to a great start, like seventh best start in franchise history. And we talked about it last week about all the haves and have-nots, only 10 teams with a winning record in Major League Baseball. Yeah. When you look at the Phillies, yeah. you look at the Dodgers, you look at the Yankees, and you look at you know the White Sox, who have already lost 51 of their first 68 games. Can this be one of those years where we might see the Mariners' record for wins broken and maybe the Mets' loss record be broken in the same year? You know, it's 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 funny. I was thinking about that the other day, and I think we talked about this last week. I think the first class section right now is Yankees, Orioles, Phillies, Dodgers, and I'm not dismissing the Guardians. I don't know how they, guys. I don't know how the heck they're doing this. I did not see this coming. Terry Francona left. They haven't missed a beat. They've they've actually gotten better. They're spending about four seventy five on baseball players, and uh, but the Yankees to me. Uh, right now are the most complete team because they're still incomplete without Garrett Cole. I mean, you think of, of what they have done and the way Heal has has stepped up and the way Stroman has pitched. Now, do I think Stroman's going to get through the whole year? I hope he does healthy. I do. But it, it, it would be an unusual thing for him. But the Yankees, to me, top to bottom, the only question I have, I was going to ask you guys today, do you think they have to think about DHing Soto more? And if they DH Soto, that means that Stanton has to take a seat right. more than he has taken a seat. Because to me, they can't let anything happen to him. They have to preserve him. And I don't know, uh, you know, I don't know how many throws, uh, average throws he makes from the outfield in a given game. But don't you think that they have to think about DHing him more going forward? Well, because well, but the thing is, is that you've got to put sure. the best team on the field because it's great. The start is they're only two and a half games ahead of Baltimore. So you don't have the luxury the Phillies have with a 10-game lead on the Braves where you can mess around. I, I think you still have the obligation to give your team the best chance to win every night. But I, I hear what you're saying. you got to make sure you preserve this guy because you're going to need him in the postseason for what you hope is going to be a long run. Yeah. 
And, and Donnie, you know, the, the Phillies just got dinged with Rio Muto. Right. Okay. But the Yankees, the Yankees are hopeful that the biggest injury that they're going to suffer this year is the one they already suffered mm. with the, the guy who was the ace of the sport last year, which is Garrett Cole. And and again, you you see how fragile these things are. I I, I, I say all the time, sports, the biggest stories turn in an instant. The, the Celtics had one view of the finals, and then Porzingis lands funny, and now they're looking at this through a completely hey. different prism now. Well, well. And... And, and I'll just say this about Judge, okay? Judge, when he hit 62, played 157 games. You know how unusual that was at the time. Last year, and again, it was a freak thing that happened to him last year, running into that outfield door. But he misses two months, and all of a sudden, the season they thought they were going to have isn't the season they ended up having. So it, it, it changes in a minute. All I will say is, this to me is the best Yankee team, top to bottom, with Cole coming back, that I have seen since they won the World Series in 2009. Well, think about just two years ago in 2022. They were off to a better start through 69 games than this year, and look what happened in the second half of the year. By the time they played the Astros in the League Championship Series, they had nobody healthy. So there's the perfect example right there. Johnny, they were great that year, but I, this team, there's a special feeling about this team right now, okay? And they don't give out any trophies with whatever it is, 90 games to go, okay? But there is, there is a sense with them that they are back to being the Yankees. Capital T, capital Y. And, 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 and you know, it, there's, there's so much mythology about the Yankees. It's like, well, uh, you know, our mission statement every year is the World Series of Bus. Well, no. <laughs> no, not over the last 15 years it's not. You've been a wild card. You rarely win the division. And so this, to me, they've got their swag back right now. And it's really fun to watch. I mean, God, I mean, they've rolled the Royals last two nights. It, 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 they, they made the Royals, who are a pretty good yeah. team, look, they're, they're playing in some sort of JV division. Um, I'm excited about this question, Mike. No one I'd Very rather. excited. No one I'd rather ask it to than you. You have $100 to place a future bet on Scotty Scheffler or Carlos Alcaraz over the next 10 years. Where are you putting your money? Uh, Carlos Alcaraz. And I will tell you this. I, I have played golf since I was nine years old. I love golf. I am steeped in the history of the sport. I, 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 I think about golf more often than, than I should. And, and I, I, loved, I love to play golf. But this kid, I, I, I tweeted this out the other day after the French Open final. And I, I even got, uh, Taylor Lupica was engaged enough to watch the last three sets with me the other day because I said, this kid is special, okay? And, and there's a thing in sports and maybe all of the arts where genius is something that you, you look at and you think, well, if somebody got really good, they could do that. And then there's magic in sports. And magic is something that you look at and you say, no, I could never do that. There's a magic about this kid. The other day in the French Open final, and I don't want to go all deep tennis, okay? Um, he had just lost the last five games of the third set. He's 5-2 and he loses the set. Mm. And what does he turn? He turns around and wins one and two. He, he, he there, there's, a, there's a thing. The, the, uh, last year at the Wimbledon final, uh, he loses the first set to Djokovic 6 1. He gets rolled, okay? <laughs> and I texted my friend Patrick McEnroe sitting there doing the match because, you know, it's like Michael. I like to text these guys during the day. <laughs> it's a yeah. response, sure. <laughs> and, and you know why I do it? Because cause I can. That's why. So, anyway, so. <laughs> And, and I texted Patrick, and I, I actually remind, I saw him not long ago, and I said, just remember, there's a guy sitting right next to you, oh wait, he's your brother, who once lost the first set of a Wimbledon final to Bjorn Borg and came back and won the match, which he did, okay? I, 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 when, I, when I was a kid in the newspaper business, I think we talked about Wimbledon last week, because I'm going back there in a few weeks. 
I used to love going to Wimbledon. I covered Borg and McEnroe and Connors. I did all that stuff, okay? Connors has been my friend for, you know, 150 years, okay? So I, I have seen this sport at its best. But all of the hand-wringing about where are we going to go without Djokovic and Fed and Nadal, I, I think this kid, if he's blessed with good health, is going to answer those questions. He's 21 years old. I think he turned 21 in May. And it's already won three major championships already. This, this kid is special. And, and, and again, I, I love Scheffler. I love everything about him. I mean, I, I think it was Rory the other day said the only way you can beat him is to put him in jail. Okay? And, and I, I think he's odds on to win the U.S. Open. He's having a Tiger-like year. But you, you give me that hundred dollars right now, and I'll, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll turn around and ask you this: Which one of them you think is going to win more majors? Oh well, Al- Alcaraz. Yeah, yeah, and and so yeah, no, it's it's a great, it, it's actually a great question. I'd like to compliment you on a great question. Uh-huh. Thank you. I, and I'll, 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 I want to follow it up with one thing. I know we got to go. <laughs> just maybe something to think about for next week. I don't have to go. I'm just I'm sitting here at my test. What you guys, you guys can blow me <laughs> off if you want to. I, I know. I know. It's 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 commercial. I don't care. You know what? We'll blow blow them all out for you, Mike. But <laughs> but um, also when I wonder what sport we could think of. Where there's been a time where the goat of that sport may have changed so consecutively. What you're talking about, essentially, correct me if I'm wrong, you're the expert, but I am a tennis fan. We thought you couldn't get better than Sampras, Federer, right. Nadal, right. Djokovic, yep. Alcaraz, potentially. It, it, it's an unbelievable run for the sport. Granted, for some people, with, with, with Serena now being on the outs and Venus as well. I know Americans may not be as into it, but when you look at the men's game, it's an unbelievable run of greatest ever. Okay, here's the thing, and I know you guys got to go. Okay, now my math might be wrong, but I think I'm right. I think Djokovic has 24, I think Nadal has 22, I think Fed had 20, okay? So that's 66 major titles among those three guys. Would you like to know how many majors John McEnroe, Bjorn Borg, and Jimmy Connors won? Uh, I'd, I'd say combined. Hold on. Uh, I, uh, nine. 26. <laughs> okay, 26. Hold on. Lala. Wait a minute, Peter. Peter Borg won 11. Come on, Okay, Peter. sorry, right. sorry. My Borg numbers no, went were too bad. Far. But I know that, if he just I know tapped out by great question, Peter, none of this would have happened. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know Connors and McEnroe, though I knew, did not have many. Borg's eleven health, but still, the point remains: it's triple. Right. It's insane. Jimmy's got Jimmy's got eight. John's got seven, and Borg had eleven. So what I'm saying is, but Jimmy once told me that it, 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 obviously major championships are important. He said back when we played, we just wanted to win tournaments. We just wanted to win money. That's why Jimmy's won a hundred and whatever tournaments he has. There wasn't the obsession with majors and then Pete changed that game okay I remember the day that, that Roddick played you know Federer a life and death match I think it was 16-14 in the fifth set and Pete was there and that was the day that, that Fed went by Pete and, 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 and Roddick looked up in the crowd and said Pete I did my best okay <laughs> and then and then here come these three guys and, and yeah. they push themselves and it, again for someone who loves the sport it has been a privilege to watch this but Guess what? Maybe we really saw the page get turned uh, the other day at the French. Awesome stuff as always, Mike. Thank you, man. Talk to you next week. Well, uh, talk to you next Wednesday, guys. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Looking, looking forward to so it. I, I just love the insight that Mike brings with so many things.